it's another cold day. I'm looking forward to the summer. Okay, so this is not my shed. We'll get to that in a minute. But a lot of you have been asking, when are we going to move house? Because obviously when I filmed an update when we left our last place and then moved on an narrowboat, that was months ago. And unfortunately, I still don't have an answer. It's still ongoing. Anyway, something that we've been conscious about is all of our stuff obviously won't fit on a narrowboat because it's a narrowboat. And we've had to put everything in storage, well, most of it in storage for the last so many months. Anyway, my dad kindly um, built a big shed for, well, it's his workshop shed for his own back garden. But he's kindly said that we could use it, take everything out in storage. It's obviously going to be cheaper for us in the long run. And then once we're done, we can take it out and he can use it as his own workshop. So before we fill it, we're going to need some shelves. And that's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you a few different DIY shed shelving ideas and then we'll do it as we go along and fill them. I'm going to start on this side first. Now this is the side that my dad will have a workbench eventually, so I don't want to interfere lower down. So there's not going to be a load of space for brackets, so I think we're going to go for London brackets. Now these are really, really sturdy, you can get from Screwfix and just try and go for the white ones. I personally find these stronger. They do come in different sizes, I think this is 30 centimetres deep. Anyway, that's what we're going to go for. And you'll notice I never chuck long strips of OSB. I'll talk about that in a minute. Quick question, are you alright with that kind of like reachy height? I'm going to go about there. So then we'll start with this first line there. Oh, that's lucky. I can get that across a few spars. I don't have to chop that down. By the time that's there, I'm going to have this spare. So if you want to hang some like garden tools or something, or we overlap it with a piece of this, you can overlap it. After creating my initial mark, I line up a spirit level to it and adjust the rest of it until that bubble is dead center before drawing along it on the rest of the spars. So I've got my pencil lines. I'm only going so far just in case I change my mind on the other side. Anyway, the... I've just dropped my pencil off. So what I'm going to do is offer this up to the pencil line and mark the, uh, the holes, pre-drill them and screw them on. But, just a note, you need to put the longest side on because that's going to be the, uh, the, the strongest side to hold it on there. So the shortest side is going to be the, the shelf bit. I've used these for years and I've overloaded them and they've never bowed, but the grey ones have. So, well, yeah, go for these. If you can see where the screws are going to go, it's quite close to the edge. So I'm going to have to drill on an angle inwards so I don't go through accidentally. Now, this isn't the most powerful screwdriver in the world. I did buy it with my own money. It wasn't given. But for awkward things like this up in the air, I don't have to carry two combi drills because it's got a drill feature and then I can twist at the end and then screw it in. So that's what we're going to use. And put it back on drill. Can you pass me an L bracket? I forgot. <laughs> Ta. That's one done. Right, we decided to go all the way across, and that means I can't put that bracket up yet because I've got to continue the line with my spirit level. The bubble's in the way. Right. So we can have something overlapped on that side. It might offend you. We've gone with an overlap, means I don't have to cut it and mess about meeting something halfway. And uh, yeah, that's slightly off there, but who cares? By the time everything's on there, it's not going to matter. I am not going to be looking at this all day long. I haven't got my tiny screws out of storage, but normally you put some above there. But a word of warning, when you put the little screws in, make sure that they don't poke out at the top or don't put things like tubs of paint or brick acid up there, which that's happened to me and it leaked all over my shed floor. Let's just get it loaded, we'll worry about stuff like that later. I found some little screws, but I went on a silly angle there. Now before we carry on, 
let's eat something because I am starving. And that means this project is kindly sponsored by HelloFresh. If you've never heard of them, they're an online delivery food service where you can select what meals you want each week and have them delivered straight to your door. And everything is pre-weighed, everything's portioned off, which actually works out perfect for us because we're on a narrowboat and we don't have a lot of space. And that means there's less food waste as well. One of the things I love are the easy to follow recipe cards. And if you don't wanna use the card version, you can actually use the app instead and even select the meals on there where there's loads of nutrition value and just keep clicking to the next step. Also, if you're a very busy person, there's a lot of 20 minute recipes. Dinner's ready. It's nice and buttery. You know, I've never had a bad meal from HelloFresh. I'm very impressed that we actually spend just between two of us, 30 pounds each time we have a Indian takeaway because it's my favorite food. And this is so much cheaper and it tastes just as nice. In fact, better. So if you want to try some tasty meals that work out from £3.15 per serving, then I'll leave a QR code on the screen now that gives you 60% off your first box and 25% off your next two boxes. This back wall is going to be twin slots all the way across and we'll worry about the pitch for the filter, maybe add some more. Uh, that's a starting point, I need a spirit level. carpenter tip which is not mine my dad just suggested it as long as you've got one outer one done either end pop the spirit level on top providing it's long enough and when you put the rest of them on you can push it up against it and screw it on now this design might look flimsy but I've never had any of them break or bend on me and I've loaded them with loads of uh, timber and stuff anyway the thing that I like about them is you can move them or customize them however you want you can buy them in different lengths as well anyway that's what we're going to do is just get an idea of how we want the shelves and then have a look at the um the osb timber that we've got here's a budget saving tip if you've got too many of these and not enough of the twin slots we uh, are one shy of uh, the twin slots on the other end so what i've decided to do is remove this move it over there because we've got a long shelf to go there but i don't want it to bow so i'm going to put those in the middle one there the only downside is that will get in the way with the next one okay so this is a configuration we're going with for now we need to bring a lot more stuff in to get an idea of which is going to be the best way but at the moment we need to get everything off the floor fill them and then we'll <coughs> work on some more shelves alright. I can't believe this is all one van full because it's so empty in here which is promising because we've got a lot of stuff. Anyway we need to go back get some more stuff come back and do some more shelves. Well that didn't go to plan for filming. We'd hired a van to clear all the last bits in storage and it ended up being a race against time before we took it back because all of our stuff was all over this lawn. Anyway, you now can no longer get in here properly. So that's scuppered my plans of showing you any more shed shelving ideas in here. Let's move on to the next one. So I don't think my dad quite realized how much stuff we really had. So he built another lean-to shed. I didn't get involved with this one, but because I didn't do as many shed shelving ideas as I wanted to, I'm gonna put some in here for my dad and you can get an idea as well. One of the ideas I wanted to share with you, because I love it so much, is using some plywood attached to the spars. Now, I really want to point out where these came from. These were actually cheap or free to my dad. And do you know where they're from? They are offcuts from a cable reel factory. And they're perfect for shed shelves, so definitely go to your local one to see if they've got any of these. To fit them, I'm going to use a cut down offcut, and I'm going to hold it up against the spars sat on the floor, and mark the same height all the way across. Obviously, it does help if your shed is level. Now I've got all my height marks, I can line up these plywood brackets to the pencil mark, and I know exactly where to pre-drill and screw it. But what I wanna say is, this is quite thick plywood, but it's probably about 12 mil thick. But you could do this with thinner stuff if you wanted, and having a piece either side with another piece of stud work screwed in between. For the shelf part, you could use anything like old doors. It's not going anywhere. To stop them slipping, you might want to add a piece of wood here, screw it to the side, and there you've got a surface you can screw that to the shelves itself. I like it. Another 
another one of my favourite ideas that I wanted to do, but I can't get to them, is to use some folding brackets and you can mount them to the spars. And all you need is just a piece of wood on top of it and it will flip up and down and you can fold it away when you're not using it. So we've run out of these brackets now. I need to go back to the wood yard to get some more. But if you want some more ideas, I've got a huge playlist here from when I kitted out my workshop shed. Anyway, catch me in the next one.